Coming off their first loss of the year, the Liberty Flames return home this Saturday to face another FCS playoff caliber opponent in St. Francis. Last week, fifth-ranked Jacksonville State held Liberty to its lowest point total of the year. Studying the tape after a loss is never easy, but the Flames know what they have to work on. A couple um, deep balls, you know, fade balls to uh, B.J. Farrow. Uh, overthrew him a couple times and put the ball out of bounds, which you can't can't have that. You got to give the receiver a chance. It's just really a humbling experience. Um, just looking back at everything that you know, we felt like there were plays there, but we were just one key block or one key broken tackle away from just making a big play. I think the biggest thing has been more consistent running the football. If that's that's been common even with the first game, second game, third game, we've been constantly talking about that and. Uh, we knew last week at Jacksonville State had a very, very good defense and uh, still a little bit disappointing that we were not able to do better than what we did. The Flames were held to just 31 rushing yards and 1.1 yards per carry at Jacksonville State. Liberty does get good news heading into this week. Senior running back Todd Macon has been cleared to play after suffering a serious knee injury in spring. The last week here we put him in a little bit more reps in practice to see how he would uh, be able to go. And the doctors have now finally cleared him. And uh, now let's go out there and see what he can do. I know he's uh, very, very anxious to, to get out there and play and, and show his uh, skills. You know, Todd adds another factor into um, our offense. You know, he's an experienced guy. He's playing a lot of football, and he's a very versatile guy. So it'll be great to have him back this week. Saturday, St. Francis comes to Williams Stadium to face 22nd-ranked Liberty for the first time since 2010. A lot has changed since then. A year ago, the Red Flash won the Northeast Conference title and made the FCS playoffs for the first time. St. Francis is 2-1 and one and coming off a of bye week. In their first three games, the Red Flash have allowed only one touchdown. They do a really good job of mixing up coverages. They are not a very static or consistent look defense. They're going to mix up a number of different looks, man, zone, and a combination of both. Bring pressure internally and externally. Try to confuse you at the point of attack. They pretty much do stick to their scheme, but they like to throw a couple of uh, wrinkles in here and there, and they like to do a little bit of um, delay blitzing and stuff like that, try to hide their coverages and stuff. So, I mean, nothing, the film don't lie, so whatever they put on film is usually what we're going to get in the game. St. Francis also leads all of FCS football in turnover margin. The Red Flash have forced 10 turnovers in three games while only turning it over twice. St. Francis's offense has averaged 38 points per game so far with great balance in the run and pass game. You watch some of the schemes that they do, they do a good job. If you're not careful, you'll get out flank and you can be a man down. And so if you try to cover the pass, um, you may be short in the run game. And then if you try to bring more to the box, uh, they have some tall receivers that have proven that if they can get behind you, uh, they can utilize their height to their advantage, and uh, you'll find yourself giving up an explosive play. Uh, so it's really going to be a chess match. St. Francis quarterback Bear Finnemore is a transfer from Houston. He has eight touchdown passes and one interception in three starts. All-American wide receiver Cameron Lewis leads the red flash with four touchdown grabs. And running back, Jameer jordan Tony leads the NEC in rushing yards with 90 per game. They will only be special on Saturday if we mess up. You know, they only will come out on top if we mess up. You know, that's how teams look good when a, another team allows them to be successful with their game plan. But if we come out here with our game plan and, and, and take it one play at a time, we can, they won't. You won't hear about that wide receiver. You won't hear about the quarterback. You won't hear about the two backs. Saturday night's meeting kicks off at 6 p.m. inside Williams Stadium. The Liberty Flame Sports Network from VWSC will have live TV coverage on ESPN3, the Big South Network, and The Walk. Live radio coverage begins at 4.30 on flagship station 88.3 FM in Lynchburg. For the Liberty Flame Sports Network, I'm Nick Pierce.